Uh, so that was a tough act to follow, um, but I'm actually grateful because uh, Dr. Baker introduced some very important concepts that's going to be helpful for this talk. Uh, so the idea of the self-agency, taking management of your epilepsy, um, and he also did make a, a good argument for exercise for brain health as well. Let me see if I can get my slides here. All right, I think we're good. Okay, so I'm excited to talk to you tonight about the role of exercise in managing epilepsy. It's something I'm very passionate about. And uh, these are the questions that I will try to address. These are what Peter just mentioned. And first, I just want to define uh, the difference between physical activity and exercise. So physical activity uh, is actually any bodily movement done by your muscles that requires energy. So it includes every movement, um, doing the dishes, uh, taking care of your kids, anytime you're moving, that's doing physical activity. Um, exercise then is a subset of physical activity. And it's uh, specifically that it's planned, structured, repetitive, and purposeful in that the whole goal of it is to improve or maintain physical fitness. So how much physical activity are we supposed to be doing? Uh, these are guidelines uh, from the CDC, but it's pretty universal that uh, all people should do at least 150 minutes per week of uh, moderate intensity aerobic activity. So that an example of that would be brisk walking. Uh, so that would be 30 minutes a day, five days a week. Or 75 minutes a week of vigorous intensity aerobic activity or some combination of the two. And in addition to that, two or more days of muscle strengthening activities per week. So that's the recommendations for the general population. Um, and multiple studies have shown that people with epilepsy are actually less physically active than the general population and less likely to be meeting these guidelines. And we know that physical activity is important for all people, for general health. We all know that we should be doing it. Uh, but here's a few reasons why it might be particularly helpful for people with epilepsy. Because we know that people with epilepsy have increased incidence of mortality, uh, cardiovascular disease, heart disease, high blood pressure, uh, diabetes on and on, and also increased rates, uh, as you've seen, of mood disorders, sleep disorders, and cognitive impairment. And we know that physical activity can help improve all these things in the general population. So we'll look now at some of the data in the epilepsy population. Uh, so starting with mood, there have been several observational studies that have shown a relationship between the level of physical activity and levels of depression. So the more physically active um, is associated with lower levels of depression. This uh, graph is from a randomized controlled trial of exercise in people with epilepsy. And we're looking at something called the profile of mood states. Uh, the circles are the people with epilepsy who did exercise. The squares are the people with epilepsy who did not. Um, and I just wanted to show this as a visual so you can see the exercise group reported lower rates of tension, depression, anger, uh, increased vigor, and uh, less confusion than those who did not exercise. Other studies have shown improvements in depression in people with epilepsy after exercise, improvements in stress, and in children, um, parents have rated improvement in their children's behavioral and social problems and their mood-related well-being after exercise therapy. Then we also have the animal models of epilepsy. Um, so in a model that had epilepsy and depression, uh, they've actually showed that exercising the animals uh, decreased the depression-like behavior. And next we can talk about cognitive function, as, as was covered. Uh, so I have a couple of pictures here. I'll start with the one on the left. Uh, this is from a study of exercise in humans. The red is the people with epilepsy who exercised. The blue did not. Um, and you're looking at change in uh, verbal learning over time. And you can see that it improved in the epilepsy group uh, who exercised. And then on the right, the other graph uh, is from a separate small study. 
Um, and again, you have the pale pink shows the exercise group, and you can see they had improvement in their executive functioning, which is measures of like that working memory, um, thinking, processing, planning. Those are both done in adults and then in children. Um, there was a study in children who had benign epilepsy with centrotemporal spikes, and they had significant improvement in their visual and auditory attention and their executive functioning after five weeks of an exercise program. And then again, back to the animal models, they've also shown improvement in cognitive tasks after exercise. And sleep um, hasn't been looked at as much in the literature, but it is something that I'm looking at in my research. Uh, and problems with sleep are common in children and adults with epilepsy, rates ranging from 24 to 55%. Why is that? It could be due to several reasons. Um, seizures, especially nocturnal seizures, can disrupt sleep. Medication side effects, um, having comorbid mood disorders can affect sleep. And then you have increased rates of sleep apnea um, and sometimes even poor sleep hygiene. And all of these things can combine to less sleep. And we know that less sleep uh, is a risk factor that could lead to uh, breakthrough seizures, uh, worsen cognitive deficits, and also could worsen mood issues. We also have seen that poor sleep quality is a significant predictor of lower quality of life in people with epilepsy. And uh, down at the bottom there, there was uh, an animal study that did show that after exercising the animals, um, they showed uh, improvement in their sleep in a temporal lobe epilepsy model. And regardless of the effects on any of these other comorbid conditions, there have also been several studies that have just shown um, improvement in quality of life with exercise in both adults and children with epilepsy. Okay, so we have all that information. We also know from um, surveying people with epilepsy that they do report that in general, they feel like exercise or physical activity helps them feel healthier and happier, uh, decreases their stress level, uh, positively impacts their mood. However, I already told you, we also know that people with epilepsy are less physically active. So what, what is the disconnect here? Um, well, there are uh, special barriers to exercise for people with epilepsy. We all run into barriers with to exercise, uh, not having time, not having motivation, um, but there are additional barriers to consider for the epilepsy population, um, such as fear of having a seizure with exercise, fear of seizure-related injuries, uh, stigma, and also receiving incorrect advice from medical professionals. So I'll try to address one of those major barriers. This question um, is, does exercise cause seizures? Uh, so there have been a lot of human studies and uh, even more animal studies in epilepsy uh, of exercise at high intensities, um, and it's never been shown that exercise causes seizures or increases the risk of seizures. Uh, there have also been a couple studies that have looked at whether exercise can actually change the level of anti-seizure medications in the blood. Uh, the thought being, you know, possibly if you're going to exercise, will that increase the metabolism and then decrease your anti-seizure medication levels? Um, so they've looked at that and it, they do not decrease to a significant degree. And then there have been some small studies that have shown some improvement in seizure frequency with exercise. And there's also uh, numerous studies that actually looked at the EEG, so looking at the brain waves during and after exercise, and they've shown a reduction in epileptiform discharges uh, during and after the exercise. But you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, so this is um, actually a um, report from the ILAE Task Force on Sports and Epilepsy, and they... Uh, put forth a consensus statement about what exercises and sports are safe or recommended for people with epilepsy. Uh, so this table one you're looking at is uh, different categories of sports. This, so they categorize them based on uh, the level of risk. So you have group one sports, which were determined to have no significant additional risk for people with epilepsy. Group one sports include pretty much all the things you typically think of as um, regular exercise, uh, the most common thing. So athletics, that would include things like jogging, running, walking, 
um, and then all the sports that are played on the ground, baseball, basketball, football, etc. Group two sports um, are determined to have a moderate increased risk for people with epilepsy, but not to bystanders. So I try to think of this group kind of as the um, water-based sports and aerial-based sports. So if you're doing anything when you're not on the ground or you're in the water, uh, there's a moderate increased risk um, for the epilepsy uh, participant, but not to bystanders. And you can look at that risk, or, or sorry, that list. I won't read the whole thing. And then lastly, you have your group three sports. So uh, those are determined to be high risk for people with epilepsy and also um, potential increased risk for bystanders. Uh, so in that category, it's kind of akin to uh, the driving restrictions. Um, so things where you might not just hurt yourself, but also could hurt other people. So aviation, flying planes, um, motorsports, parachuting, things like that, some of the riskier sports. Okay, so then uh, the next table is uh, the groups of sports, um, and then uh, at the top you're looking at the different categories of seizures. So I tried to highlight uh, what you want to pay attention to. Uh, in the left column is seizure-free, and on the right column that I've highlighted is um, epilepsy considered to be resolved, which means that you haven't had a seizure in 10 years and you've been off medication for five years. Um, and so clearly, um, Everything is permitted um, in those folks. Then in the middle um, is different um, types of seizures, so sleep-related seizures only, seizures without impaired awareness, and seizures with impaired awareness. And I want to point out that for the group one sports, which again is a lot of common activities, um, it's pretty much permitted across the board with a couple of caveats. So um, seizures with impaired awareness, or if you're in the process of medication withdrawal, it uh, says permitted at neurologist's discretion when seizures are precipitated by certain activities. So if you happen to uh, have your seizures precip precipitated um, every time uh, you do a certain activity, so running maybe that activates your seizures, that's when you need to talk to your neurologist um, and uh, help with their discretion in evaluating whether that uh, sport or activity is actually going to be the right thing for you to be doing. Um, and even group two sports, you can see a lot of them are permitted. Um, and even if you're still having active seizures with impaired awareness, um, permitted at the neurologist's discretion with some restrictions. I don't know if you can read that, so I'm reading it for you. And those restrictions usually include um, things like supervision and uh, monitoring over time. But this is all written out in a paper that is available. And, um, I saw some people taking some pictures, so that's good. Now you have that to bring to your neurologist. Um, okay, so that uh, paper came out in 2016, that consensus statement, um, but we still know that there's still kind of a gap between um, what's being recommended for people with epilepsy and what people with epilepsy are doing in terms of physical activity. Uh, this top uh, number here is uh, results from a survey that we did at our center in the Southeast United States. We uh, interviewed about uh, 100 uh, patients in our clinic, and 40% uh, of them reported that their neurologist had never talked to them about exercise or physical activity. And then the numbers here at the bottom, this is a survey that was done of neurologists in Latin America. 60% of those neurologists who were surveyed were not aware of the recommendations from the ILAE, the ones I just showed you. 35% of them said they had no information about um, physical exercise in people with epilepsy, and 57% were still restricting exercise for patients if they weren't seizure-free. Um, so this is just to show that not, um, not everyone has uh, come on board with the concept of exercise for people with epilepsy, um, but it's something that we're trying to improve through education. And then I just want to circle back um, to those recommendations I showed you at the beginning, those physical activity guidelines, um, because I know that does seem like a lot, and I don't want anyone to think that if you're not doing 150 minutes of aerobic exercise every week, um, that you might as well do nothing, because that's not true at all. So this graph is just showing, and this is a, a, a graph from all people, so it's not uh, particular to people with epilepsy, but it does show cardiovascular mortality um, and physical activity. Uh, and you can see uh, on the right, you have meeting the guidelines. On the left, you have no physical activity. But look how much improvement there is with just some physical activity. Uh, so the bottom line is that some 
physical activity is much better than nothing. So then in summary, uh, the take home points is that many, there are many possible benefits for people with epilepsy if you increase your physical activity. Um, there is no evidence that exercise increases seizures, and in fact there's some evidence that it can help uh, with seizure control. But the decision on what activity to do, how much to do, um, et cetera, should be made on an individual basis in consultation with your neurologist. Now I did just show you that some neurologists might not know about the guidelines, uh, but now you know. And so now you have that information and you can use that in your conversations with your, with your doctor. And then lastly, just that every little bit counts. I think we'll have time for some questions. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Alexander. We do have a few questions. Uh, firstly, your views on yoga and Pilates. Oh, yes. Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, so there have been a couple of studies on yoga, and they've been very promising um, that yoga can help improve seizure control. Because um, I think with yoga, you're not just getting um, the exercise, the movement benefits. You're also getting some of that stress management. I mean, all exercise um, can be used as stress management, uh, but you know that particular kind of mind-body connection with yoga. Um, so yeah, I think it's uh, safe if that's the question, and also helpful for uh, seizure control if that's the question. And secondly, can exercise prevent the onset of epilepsy later in life? Uh, that's a really good question, too. Um, so there was a study done in Sweden. Um, a large, over a million people were included in the study. They looked at the physical fitness of 18-year-old um, males who were entering the military service. Um, so their fitness was measured as part of that exam. And then they followed them. I want to say 40 years later, uh, up to 40 years later, and looked at the incidence of epilepsy. And they did show that in those who were more physically active at the age of 18, were less likely to develop epilepsy later on. So um, that gives some evidence that uh, the answer would be yes. There is some evidence to show that physical activity might help prevent the onset of epilepsy. 